our energies and skills, because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling, willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one we intend to win, and the others too. ABC News presents Footsteps on the Moon, the flight of Apollo 11. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Frank Reynolds at ABC Space Headquarters in New York. It is July 16th, 1969, and we are all about to witness the fulfillment of that promise that President Kennedy made at Rice University Stadium in Texas on September 12th, 1962. The moon that still has not set in some parts of our world has only a few more days of uh, what you might call untrammeled history. These three men are about to embark on certainly one of history's most glorious adventures. Commander Neil Armstrong, Lunar Module Pilot Buzz Aldrin, and Command Module Pilot Mike Collins. Armstrong and Collins have already entered their command module, and Buzz Aldrin will be entering to join them in a few moments to begin this epic journey. And we shall all see it. ABC Science Editor Jules Bergman is at the Cape. There has been uh, a minor difficulty uh, developed there at the Cape, and let's get a report from Jules now on just what is being done. Good morning, Jules. Good morning, Frank. We're at T-minus uh, two hours and 28 minutes into the scheduled launch of Apollo 11 at 9.32 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, and the countdown has been going spectacularly until about 10 minutes ago, just before Neil Armstrong, Mike Collins, and Buzz Aldrin started to get in, into the cabin of Apollo 11. And then a slight leak developed in a valve system that replenishes the liquid hydrogen for the third stage of the Saturn V, the S-4B stage. The valve in question is not on the spacecraft itself, but on GSE, or ground support equipment. It's the same valve, the very same valve, by the way, that leaked back on Apollo 10. Everything else here, Frank, is holding up very well. There's a forecast of clouds at 15,000 feet. As we look back to pad 39, right directly behind our ABC News space headquarters here at the Cape, you can see the clouds over the ocean. They haven't yet truly developed over the land area, and if it stays this way, everyone in the country and millions of people gathered around central Florida will get a spectacular eyewitness view of Apollo 11 and the Saturn V lifting off. Uh, as it is now, there's a light layer of cirrus clouds at about 15 to 20,000 feet over the Cape. Uh, they could cause some interference with visual viewing, but not with the launch itself. The launch limits have gone down really much, if you will, on this uh, fifth launch, fourth launch, we should say, of the Saturn V, fourth manned launch, fifth unmanned. Uh, as of now, the weather is good, the countdown going well, except for this liquid hydrogen leak, which has to be fixed, and there's no reason to think we won't lift off at 9.32 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, as scheduled. That's the story, Frank. The astronauts of Apollo 11 uh, awoke early today and began their ritual-like preparations for this blast off to the moon. Uh, one of their doctors, as I told you earlier, said they appear rested, fit as a fiddle, and ready to go. They actually had about eight hours of sound sleep, which is probably more than a good many other people who were preparing for this launch uh, today. They had a, a big breakfast of scrambled eggs, steak, toast, coffee, and orange juice. And for a film report on their final meal on Earth before blasting off, here's Jules Bergman at the Cape. Crew, <clears throat> astronauts Armstrong, Aldrin, and Collins were awakened at 4.15 a.m. this morning, just about three hours ago, after having gone to bed about 9.20 last night, and immediately after a quick medical, uh, had a, the traditional astronauts' breakfast of steak and eggs. There's Buzz Aldrin, the lunar module pilot. We saw Mike Collins a moment ago. Spacecraft Commander Neil Armstrong, who'll be 39 on August 5th, just a few days from now, led by security guards, really reading a farewell. As they get into the transfer van uh, for the three-and-a-half-mile ride uh, to pad 39A, Neil Armstrong leading the way, then Mike Collins, and finally Buzz Aldrin. We're back at ABC Space Headquarters in New York, awaiting the still-scheduled launch at 9.32 Eastern Daylight Time this morning of Apollo 11. The commander of the mission is 38-year-old Neil Armstrong, the only civilian among the three-man crew, and, of course, the man scheduled to take the first actual step on the moon. The pilot of the lunar landing module is Edwin Aldrin, Jr., 39 years old and an Air Force colonel. 38-year-old Michael Collins, a lieutenant colonel in the Air Force, is the pilot of the command module. 
It will be his job to circle the moon while Armstrong and Aldrin are down on its surface. Jules, did you have any difficulty getting out to the Cape this morning? Frank, we had no difficulty, but we, we practically didn't get to sleep at all last <laughs> night just to be sure we didn't have, wouldn't have any difficulty. The shot we're looking at from the helicopter now is over Highway A1A, the main north-south road along the Atlantic, and we're looking at the beach just below the south gate, the old gate one of the Cape where we came in this morning. You know, the drama may be here at Pad 39 and on the moon this Sunday, that unforgettable drama, but it's somehow, for me, also on the roads around this spit of land which Spanish explorers 352 years ago landed on and called Canaveral for, for the fields of sugar cane. That's what Canaveral means in Spanish, cane fields. The fields of sugar cane they found growing here. We passed 10,000 odd cars, what we guesstimated, parked around the gate one area at 4 a.m. when we got here, cars from every state, with little kids staring wide-eyed at the Saturn V glowing in the huge xenon spotlights 15 miles away. And we saw teenagers with telescopes. It was the very same road we came over eight long years ago, 21 manned space flights ago, when we came out at just about the same hour to cover Alan Shepard's 15-minute suborbital hop, America's first manned space flight. Americans cared then, I think, and they care now. And it was a very moving scene for me because, well, we were tired. They were tired. They'd been up all night. All those th thousands of people who we see now in daylight in those cars parked along the road that our live helicopter is uh, showing us Indeed, the helicopter pilot this morning, Bob Lockrow is his name, was the same man who used to fly us here with the very first film switches we did on flights and the very first live things. There's good luck, good luck Apollo 11 engraved in the sand. All going very smoothly here with the count. Among the distinguished visitors here this morning, uh, along with Vice President Spiro Agnew, is the former president, Lyndon Johnson. There's our live picture from the VIP stands on the other side of the VAB. And and Launch Control Center. Behind uh, the former president is former NASA Administrator James Webb, sitting in the picture, uh, and many other dignitaries gathered there. Some 8,000 dignitaries and in all invited by the space agency as guests uh, to be at this launch. And there's Mrs. Johnson being greeted with the former president. 42 minutes and 44 seconds away from liftoff now of Apollo 11, which is about the size of a United States Navy destroyer, as we pointed out to you a bit earlier. It stands higher than the Statue of Liberty, and it is the most sophisticated space vehicle in the world today. It is made up of five separate parts. Jules Bergman has the story on it. Apollo 11 contains the lunar module, or LEM, which will weigh more than 32,000 pounds at launch time. The command module serves as a flight operations center and living quarters for the astronauts. After the third stage rocket sends Apollo 11 toward the moon, the onboard service module engine will be used to put the astronauts into lunar orbit and later to return them home to Earth. The total payload, nearly 100,000 pounds, rests on a Saturn V rocket. The first stage generates seven and a half million pounds of thrust at liftoff. The second stage will carry the Apollo spacecraft and astronauts to an altitude of 100 miles. And then the third stage breaks Apollo 11 out of Earth orbit and propels the astronauts toward the moon. And this is what Eagle, the lunar module uh, on Apollo 11, will look like after, uh, after its legs or uh, its, its gear is put down after a translunar flight has begun and as it heads toward the moon. In addition to this black and white covering, of course, it's covered by gold and black uh, thermal foil, if you will, mylar foil and black foil to protect it from heating as it heads around into lunar orbit and then down, down toward its descent on the moon. But essentially, that's what the vehicle looks like, a very ungainly machine. The astronauts still call it a thin light-walled flying machine, a thin light-walled structure, but it has proven to be one heck of a good flying machine on two flights now, Apollo 9 and Apollo 10. Launch Control is telling us now that uh, things are proceeding very smoothly with the fueling and with topping off the liquid oxygen in the S1C, the Saturn uh, main stage, all going very smoothly at uh, T minus 40 minutes. And uh, we're lifting off at 9.32 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time as of now, everything proceeding very smoothly toward that pre-calculated liftoff time. Two minutes, 10 seconds and counting. 
The target for the Apollo 11 astronauts, the moon at liftoff, will be at a distance of 218,096 miles away. We've just passed the two-minute mark in the countdown. T-minus one minute, 54 seconds and counting. Our status board indicates that the oxidizer tanks in the second and third stages now have pressurized. We continue to build up pressure in all three stages uh, here at the last minute uh, to prepare it for liftoff. T-minus one minute, 35 seconds on the Apollo mission, the flight to land of the first men on the moon. All indications uh, coming in uh, to the control center at this time indicate we are go. One minute, 25 seconds and counting. Our status board indicates the third stage completely pressurized. 80-second mark has now been passed. We'll go on full internal power at the 50-second mark in the countdown. Guidance system goes on internal at 17 seconds, leading up to the ignition sequence at 8.9 seconds. We're approaching the 60-second mark on the Apollo 11 mission. T-minus 60 seconds and counting. We pass T-minus 60. 55 seconds and counting. Neil Armstrong just reported back. It's been a real smooth countdown. We passed the 50-second mark. Power transfer is complete. We're on internal power with the launch vehicle at this time. 40 seconds away from the Apollo 11 liftoff. All the second stage tanks now pressurized. 35 seconds and counting. We are still go with Apollo 11. 30 seconds and counting. Astronauts report it feels good. T-minus 25 seconds. 20 seconds and counting. T-minus 15 seconds. Guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9. Ignition sequence starts. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. Power slowly. We've got a roll program. Neil Armstrong reporting the roll and pitch program, which puts Apollo 11 on a proper heading. Slowly but gathering speed. Going beautifully, burning hot. Plus 30 seconds. Roll complete and efficient program. Inboard cut off exactly on schedule. Apollo 11, now 3,000 miles, now doing 3,650 miles an hour. Eight. Downrange 35 miles, 30 miles high. Standing by for the outboard engine cut down now. Station. Outboard. And ignition. 
Armstrong reporting staging and ignition. The first stage engines have burned out exactly on schedule. The second stage engines have lit off. Houston thrusters go. All engines, you're looking good. Hey, Roger. You're loud and clear, Houston. 41 three miles. Three minutes downrange, 70 miles. 43 miles high, velocity 9,300 feet per second. We got skirt step. Roger, we confirm skirt step. Apollo 11 Armstrong. going a little faster Roger than Armstrong. expected, but perfect, perfectly within limits. Neil Armstrong confirming both the engine skirt separation and the launch escape tower separation. Houston, be advised the visual is go today. This is Houston, Roger out. Yeah, they finally gave me a window to look at. 11 Houston, uh, your guidance has converged. You're looking good. Downrange 140 miles, altitude 62 miles, velocity 10,300 feet per second. 11 Houston, you are a goal at four minutes. Still in sight from our long range cameras, burning hot, straight and true all the way, toward a moon 218,000 miles distant. A moment many Americans, many people never believed could happen or would happen. 190 miles downrange now, 72 miles high, velocity 11,000 feet per second. And the first major hurdles have been passed for Apollo 11 all going very, very well. The first minutes of a 195-hour long flight, ticking off almost without tension, almost like a regular airliner takeoff, but for the thunderous roar, the flame of the Saturn. Booster says it's looking good at five minutes. Then Houston, you are go at five minutes. Roger, you're all 11, go. We're hearing Neil Armstrong live, uh, reporting back to Booster control, Capcom in Down mission range control. 270 miles, altitude 82 miles, velocity 12,472 feet per second. Fly to S4B to COI capability. Okay. That's 9,000 miles an hour. Fly to S4B to COI capability. That's 9,000 miles an hour confirmation that the uh, Apollo 11 could now get into orbit using the S4B if necessary. You're living room. Thank you, you all are coming through beautifully, too. Very clear communications this morning, very clear air to ground from uh, Apollo 11. That's Capcom Bruce McCandless, you hear talking uh, from Houston Mission Control. And occasionally, Flight Director Cliff Charlesworth uh, in the background. And down... Everyone's reporting go here in the control center. Oh, it's six minutes. Starting to get more. And our long range... Roger, 11, uh, your go from the ground at six minutes. Our long-range cameras have lost the picture, finally. At, our cameras are now at pad 39, viewing that water deluge or dousing system we told you about. Hundreds of thousands of gallons of water saving the pad from being all but uh, wiped out by the heat and the flame. The water is still going, still keeping cool. Our animated view uh, now showing us What's happening up there at uh, six minutes and uh, 35 seconds into the flight of Apollo 11? In between the second stage and the third stage, the fuel uncovers uh, a sensor starting that sequence. We're coming up uh, almost to the point where uh, the second stage has two rockets will burn out. Covered at eight minutes, 17 seconds with outboard engine cutoff, nine minutes, 11 seconds on the second stage. Seven minutes. Eleven, this is Houston. Roger, your go from the ground at seven minutes. Level sent time at eight plus one seven. Outboard cut off at nine plus one one. Roger. Very close Down to range, nominal figures. Thirty miles, altitude ninety-five miles, velocity seventeen thousand three hundred fifty-eight feet per second. Apollo 11 has almost reached orbital velocity. Now it'll require another minute of burn of the S2. Second stage, President Johnson uh, in the VIP stands with Lady Bird Johnson, obviously relaxed, well, happy at the way the launch went, and Vice President Agnew next to the seven president. Seven minutes, 41 seconds. Roger, we confirm. Inboard engines are out. 
on the second stage as planned. Inboard engine burnout exactly on schedule at 7 minutes 40 seconds. Apollo 11 now about three minutes away from going into Earth's orbit over mid-Atlantic. Apollo 11, go on all sources. In your go at 8 minutes. I've just built the Victor Racer ship. And galloping right, along. We've got CU ships down here, too. Apollo 11 galloping along now at more than 12,500 miles an hour. Good night, Dave. Work. These thunderstorms downrange is about all. Right. Apollo 11 is That was Neil Armstrong. We couldn't make out what he said. 11, this is Houston. You are go for staging. Over. Understand. Go for staging. And by remote for capability. Remote for. Mark, mode four capability. Mode four and Apollo 11 could get into orbit using the service propulsion system now. Altitude is 100 miles, downrange 883 miles. Outboard engine cut off. And ignition. Ignition confirmed, thrust is go, 11. And we have a good third stage now. Third stage ignition on schedule, speed building up just the way it should. Looking very, very good. Velocity 23,128 feet per second. Downrange 1,000 miles, altitude 101 miles. Houston, at 10 minutes, you are go. All right, 11, go. Capcom, Bruce McCandless giving the reports here from the control center. A relaxed Neil Armstrong saying, ah, Roger, we are go. Apollo 11, this is Houston, predicted cutoff at 1-1, plus 4-2, over. 1-1, over. Downrange 1,175 miles, velocity 24,190 miles, feet per second, altitude 102 nautical miles. Apollo 11 still go on all sources. Apollo 11, this is Houston, you are go at 11. And taking away the last three seconds. We're predicting third stage shutdown at 11 minutes, 42 seconds. And Apollo 11 is just about ready to go into orbit in a few seconds from now. Velocity 25,254 feet per second. Downrange 1,400 miles now. Altitude, uh, 102.8 nautical miles. Shut down. Shut down right on time. 1.4 by 103.6. Roger, shut down, and we copy 101.4 by 103.6. Shut down. Shut down. And Apollo 11 is in orbit. Scratchy, uh... Apollo 11, this is Houston. You are confirmed to go for orbit. When the third stage is fired, the astronauts will then be inserted into an Earth parking orbit. The guidance system has already computed the trajectory needed to intercept the moon. The confirmation of that trajectory, or course, will be relayed by Houston to the astronauts. Two hours and 40 minutes after launch over the Pacific, the third stage engine will be restarted, and when an escape velocity of nearly 25,000 miles per hour is reached, Apollo 11 will be injected into a translunar trajectory. Soon after, the panels of the spacecraft's lunar module adapter are jettisoned. The Apollo command and service module then separates from the booster. The astronauts start the docking maneuver, rotating Apollo 180 degrees 
and then, using their small thruster rockets, dock with the LEM. The third stage will be jettisoned when the docking maneuver is completed about two hours after translunar injection. The astronauts, using star sightings backed up by mission control, guidance radar, and computers, then work up the data to make mid-course corrections and set their course to intercept the moon three days later. Depending on how accurate the rocket engine burns to get away from Earth, none or as many as three mid-course corrections may be needed. Apollo's speed decreases from 25,000 to less than 4,000 miles per hour en route. Then, near the moon as lunar gravity begins to exert its influence, the speed of the spacecraft increases up to 6,000 miles per hour. Apollo 11 is in a free return trajectory, which will carry it around the moon and back to Earth for recovery if problems have developed. But if all has gone well, Apollo 11's onboard service module engine will be fired and the spacecraft will be placed into lunar orbit. Because of the danger of mechanical failure, all of the systems can be overridden by the astronauts if the automatic systems aren't working perfectly. 81 hours into the flight, Armstrong and Aldrin transfer into the lunar module for the second time, completing their checkout of the lunar landing spacecraft. They remove the docking probe and drogue from the tunnel connecting the command and lunar modules and equalize the pressure in both vehicles. The lunar module pilot then floats through the docking tunnel overhead and into the LEM. One of the first tasks for the lunar module pilot is to activate the LEM's environmental control system and to change his suit connections to the LEM's umbilicals. Now, today, today the moon is the target, and we're going to get the word on that TLI burn coming up in just a moment now from Mr. Control. And we're now 14 seconds away from TLI burn. Mission Control is counting down. There's ignition. There's the word from Mission Control. Ignition over the South Pacific for the translunar insertion burn. We confirm ignition and the thrust is go. The thrust is built up to get them headed up to uh, escape velocity speed of 25,000 miles an hour. The burn took place over the southwestern Pacific, two hours and uh, 24 minutes into the flight of Apollo 11. It's looking good. Let's go to mission control now for the talk down to the separation maneuver. Copy. Captain on the canvas saying he copied, but we very faint transmission. Let's see if we can pick it up. We can run the separation here on the ground. Separation confirmed. major hurdle of the flight accomplished. Next, that docking and extraction of the land. All right, we now have a picture from Apollo 11, so let's go to Houston for the conversation between the uh, spacecraft and Houston, and we'll see these pictures. There's the Earth. The Earth from 130,000 nautical, or about 149,000 statute miles. Uh, do you think... Uh, 500 to 1,000 miles, and another uh, 
very minor storm chilling uh, the south end of the screen near the, uh, oh, a long way south of the equator, probably uh, 45 degrees or more south latitude. We were saying, uh, Cliff Charles, we said, uh, we can still see the Earth uh, through the left window, and it appears that uh, we can see a floodlight uh, off to the left, either that or some sun shafting through the hatch window. Almost looks like two Earths. That's <laughs> a floodlight. Uh, uh, now we're coming in. Uh, can't quite make out who that had. Big Mike Collins there. Well, you got a little bit of... Yeah, hello there, sports fans. You got a little bit of me, plus Neil's in the center couch, and Buzz is doing the camera work this time. Uh, Roger, uh, it's uh, a little dark uh, now, Levin. Uh, maybe a, a bigger F-stop might help. Yeah, that didn't work. <laughs> Mike, you coming in uh, five by, I got a good... Well, I put on a coat and tie, but I don't know about this ahead of time. Is uh, Buzz holding your cue cards for you over? <laughs> cue cards have a no. Uh, it's a, a real good picture we're getting here of the Commander Armstrong. 